All right, what's going on YouTube? We are actually doing something a little different today. We are checking out a mobile game that just released, uh, kind of one of my more anticipated mobile games, if you can believe that, and it is Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Now, from my understanding what Ever Crisis is, essentially it is a prequel to Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Um, so we'll got to see a little bit more backstory on people like Sephiroth, Cloud, things like that, Zack. Um, and a couple of other characters. I think it also covers a lot about uh, the soldier program and the Turks. So a lot of stuff here that's going to be like super lore heavy for Final Fantasy 7 in general. Not that we don't have enough lore about Final Fantasy 7 in its entirety anyway, because I believe it's probably one of the more popular Final Fantasies that has been given the most backstory and media coverage. Um, I mean, for good reason. Uh, it's a lot of people's favorites. It's the one that kind of blew up the most in terms of like Final Fantasies from like the um the pixel bit era to like 3d and stuff like that but that's a whole other thing you can find a youtube video that covers that um i don't know i i've seen the gameplay of this and i think a lot of people are also excited for this because it is a more traditional final fantasy meaning it's a lot more turn based versus the more action heavy oriented final fantasy that's coming out uh for the past couple of years i don't know if it's gotcha based i I'm assuming it is because it's a mobile game and most mobile games are gotcha games. So I'm not exactly sure how that's going to play out. Um, but as you can see here, it, it, it brings it brings in characters like uh, like uh, Barrett, uh, Tifa, Cloud, and, and stuff like that. So we're going to be touching on Final Fantasy VII, like actual Final Fantasy VII. But it's also going to be covering things um, that happened prior to those events and as well as like Crisis Core. So... I don't know. I'm intrigued to see how they how they handle the story in this, as well as like the general gameplay and events and stuff like that. Now, this probably won't be a playthrough. It's just going to be more like maybe like a couple first impressions. Life stream wa arayuru kiyoku, chishiki, kanjo wo nose, meguri meguru. I wonder if you can change the audio to English. Toki ni majiwari, toki ni hanare. Hmm, interesting. I assume this is going to be our tutorial, right? And we're already starting out. And I hope this video doesn't get copyrighted. It probably will. Because of music. Okay. So we're just off rip, just fighting Sephiroth. You can assume the ATB gauge uh, to unleash abilities. Okay. So click on this as an ability. So we have the active time battle gauge. Oh, so it seems like it's one of these auto battle things. Okay. And you use like the active time gauge to like use abilities and stuff. And depending on like how many bars you have. Okay. So it's one of these type of combat systems. So not exactly turn based. So you can't like really like move around the battlefield or anything like that. Um, you wait for a gauge to fill you can use special abilities, but your characters automatically attack on their own. Pretty impressive cutscenes, especially for a mobile game. Graphics don't look too bad at all. Oh, now we're Zack. Interesting. When HP is low, use Cure to restore HP. And then we get to select the target. Interesting. So I wonder if, like, the speed in which you can attack, um... It's determined by like stats and things like that. 
He has a lot of damage. Hmm, okay, so now we have a limit break. You unleash a limit break when the limit page or limit gauge was full. So we have a slash combo here. Okay, so very reminiscent of Crisis Core, but there's uh his slash attack. Interesting. Okay, so combat's gonna be traditionally like mobile based, turn based. Uh, essentially, it's sort of like an auto attack, and then you just use your ATB gauge to to use special abilities and stuff. So it's not like you have to pick attack; they just kind of do it automatically. Uh, I am curious to see like how you can increase your attack speed if that if that's like a thing with stats or like increases in levels, but we shall see. Again, graphically, it's not bad. Both like the um, the in-game uh, models and stuff like that, and then I guess like the um, the cutscenes, which seem like they might have just ripped from Final Fantasy remake. I think at least this one's like they ripped it from the remake, which I mean makes sense. Why re-record something? Um, I'm pretty sure this was ripped from like the PS4 version, maybe the PS5 version of the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, same thing with some of the models. I think they kind of like ripped some of those from like uh, Crisis Core. Um, the uh, revamp of Crisis Core as well as the remake of uh, Final Fantasy VII. Which kind of gives it that like late game PS3 slash PS4 quality in terms of like graphics and stuff like that. Which is actually pretty impressive for a mobile game. I am using a, um, a Samsung S20 as the device to, to play on, so it's not the most up-to-date tech, but it, it definitely gets the job done for some of these like more modern mobile games. train scene here. I really do need to play the Final Fantasy VII Remake again, especially before next year when uh, Chapter 2 comes out. Raising character levels. Raising the character's level increases their HP, attack, and heal strength training quest and most efficiently the raised levels. Okay. And here's another thing too, like, it's weird how, like, they change up, like, the, the graphics of the games too. Like, now we have, like, the 3D models from, like, some of the other, like, Final Fantasies that you might have seen on mobile games. This is d directly, like, from Final Fantasy VII. So no voice acting. So, 
I don't know. It, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Because um, how do you keep, like, how do you have, like, a game with, like, a pretty decent story also, like, tie into, like, gotcha game, like, mechanics? Are you just being able to, like, use different characters from different timelines into the overall story? So. I will say, though, if they ever did, like, a, a traditional Final Fantasy VII, like, traditional remake, more of, like, the ones, like, turn-based combat, I wouldn't mind if they used these models for, like, the, um, adventuring part of it. Like, use, like, these little chibi models as, like, the characters that you use to walk around in. I think they'll, like, make a lot more sense in, like, more realistic models. Because that's how, like, Final Fantasy VII was. They had, like, chibi models that they use for, like, the exploration and walking around, but then, like, once you, like, get in combat, they have more traditional 3D-looking models. Though I'd imagine someone's probably gonna rip these models out, uh, from the game somehow, and then probably put them into, like, a mod for the PC version. Alright, looks like we're gonna get some combat. Now, I don't know why they didn't wait for him to turn around. But now we get to play, like, I guess, two party members. Allies in your party will fight automatically, however, you need to manually execute their limit breaks. Okay, so he just fights on his own using his own abilities. Guard hounds are a troublesome foe that attacks relentlessly. Target it to focus your attacks. Okay. So you have to pick, basically, on screen who to attack. And this seems like you only have control of, like, one character. Which is like one main character, and then you only do like limit breaks for the other ones. Which I get it. I I I can see that would be a problem. Um, what are these things? Gill. Okay, so that's just Gill. Which I could see that being a problem. Um, like picking control of different characters and using their abilities and switching on and off. But I don't know. You just kind of get, like, more story. Again, like, if you play Final Fantasy VII, like, either, like, the, the original or, like, the remake, so far the story hasn't really changed. Um, we're, we're, we're pretty much, like, destroying one of the um, reactors. Like, one of the uh, the Mako reactors. Same, same bit, honestly. Different way of going about it, but definitely, like, same traditional bit here. Not sure what Gil's gonna be used for, I'd imagine. Oh, so they have like random battle encounters. Interesting. Okay. Some enemies have weaknesses. Uh centuries are weak to lightning and fire, so use the corresponding attacks. Okay. Weaknesses and resistance differ between enemies. Use the best abilities to in each situation to emerge victorious. Gotcha. Well at least you don't have to really worry about like magic like consumption and things like that you just have to worry about the atb bar which it's a pro and con um you kind of get used to like managing um magic in, in rpgs and stuff but they have like traditional um, random encounters it seems So he starts current escape per usual. We're going down to the reactor. We're probably gonna have to do the scorpion boss fight. So again, this is like traditional Cloud's like doesn't really care too much. It, it's more reminiscent of his character that you may be more familiar with before like his drastic changes later on in not only this game but in other media such as um, 
Crisis, not, I'm sorry, not Crisis Core, but like Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, even the Kingdom Hearts games, and, and stuff like that. There's definitely a drastic change in this character. Um, I will say more so, I think the remake handled his character development better than the original game. Um, he's a lot more likable in the beginning, uh, instead of just being like kind of like a stoic asshole, which he is in like the original Final Fantasy VII. Like, and, and I mean, don't get me wrong, it's for good reason. But he definitely comes like more of like a likable character, at least from like his transition from like his introduction in, in the beginning of the game, uh, more so than being like Aerith and, and kind of like what happens throughout the rest of Final Fantasy VII. Now, of course, games like um, Kingdom Hearts kind of like stuck to his like more emo roots, so you really didn't get much of um, you didn't get to get too much character development um, in the other games, but it just kind of I don't know it was a little different. Let's fast play. Oh, okay. Like a little mini braver. Alright, gotta level up. Still more gil. I'd imagine gil's gonna be used like purchase maybe like certain equipment and maybe characters. Again, I don't know how the gotcha elements in this game are gonna work. But it's a mobile game, so I mean it's to be expected. I'm expecting some type of like, see blue crystals. Okay, see there we go. I, I'm pretty sure one of these is gonna be like the monetizations of the of the gotcha bits of this. I'm just kind of waiting for it to be introduced. Um, it does have auto battle features too. It's like if you click on this, like I believe it does have like. Oh no, this is your ability stuff. Interesting. Oh okay, cool. So this is where you can like change abilities and stuff. Okay. I thought I had like a whole like. Like most mobile games that kind of do like the auto battle feature have something where you can like fast forward the battle speed. Um, so that way you don't have to wait as long for like the random battle, uh, battle encounters. Alright, some more blue crystals. I do like if you look at the um, at your ability icons, it kind of gives you a blinking um, notification of what the weakness is at the beginning of the battle. Um, I don't know if you noticed that, but it's blinking lightning, basically telling you that hey, lightning is um, lightning is like the weakness. You know what I mean? So. Now again, I don't know if you guys want to see like a full-on playthrough of this. I could potentially do one if you guys was interested, or like maybe like some events and things like that. Um, only reason I don't really play like a lot of gotcha games these days and like record them is just because they require money <laughs> or just like huge times of dedication, and I just don't sink that much money into mobile games unless like really invest it. The only exception has been like Dragon Ball Legends, as like one of the few mobile games that I've invested so much time into, and you know actually dropped in real dollars. All right, so now we're about to set the bomb for the reactor, but I think we're also gonna fight the scorpion. <laughs> supervising, yeah, exactly. That's what we're gonna call it, supervising. Which I get Barrett's like, um, trust issues. He, what, he did work for uh, Shira slash a soldier. Or technically, he wasn't really soldier. It's kind of hard to explain. All right, here we go. Alright, so this is our scorpion boss. I don't know how they're gonna handle like the tail mechanic. Right, so thunder is gonna be his weakness. We'll save up some ATB bar. Ready laser. I 
don't know if there's much we can do. I'm going to save up for Cure. It's definitely going to hurt. The Scorpion Sentinel is uh, preparing to leash a, a powerful attack. It says, like, is that, it, I don't think you can really defend against it. I'd rather just stay, play about my bar. You can now use Command Stance, which allows you to shift between the two types of commands. Use Command Stance to burst for some. Okay, so now it gives me defense. Okay, so, like, in Final Fantasy VII Remake, Clout gets two stances. One's, like, a more active, like, attack stance. One of them's more, like, defensive stance. Now switch to attack stance to focus on uh, offensive actions and gain benefits as improved strength. Okay. Well, that sucks. We actually used our ultimate before this came up. Scissors can be destroyed with attack abilities so you can do more attack stances. Use abilities like Braver. Okay. There we go. Now we interrupt it, which has been a big staple like Final Fantasy games. Cross Slash looks good as always. Nice. So now we can actually like do a little bit more damage. Right, he's getting ready to he's doing his ready laser. We can probably get him one more attack. And then we'll switch over to defense. So now it tells us we can do like our limit breaks together, which we already did that earlier. So we just saw that earlier. Basically, like if a character has limit breaks, you get bonus damage while doing the limit break. Right, I'm gonna cure myself here. Barret should be fine for now. There we go. Wasn't too bad. So you do have different types of mechanics as well within the game. Like the defense and attack mechanics, so... Okay, not bad. Gotta level up here. Alright, so let's take a look and see what these blue crystals. Rare ore that can be used in place of red crystals for draws and purchase of certain uh, rare items. Okay, so yeah, basically these are gonna be your draw items. Uh, Gil. Okay, and then what's this? Materia. Blizzard. Oh, okay. So this is you get materia in this game, which materia is basically how you equip like new spells and, and things like that. So we have ten minutes to get out of here. Traditional. Now, traditionally, you could run past her, but you have to go back and save her anyway. So, you be, you pretty much have to go, like, rescue her. Now, am I doing any of the running? No, actually. Interesting. So, I guess they, they feel like you didn't have to do any of this. Interesting change, I guess, to make it a little bit more accessible for mobile players. They don't have 10 minutes to, like, run through here. Come on, Jesse, get your ass up. <laughs> Come on. Needs the chest. Okay, so you had like the traditional bomb mission, and now we're back at the main menu. 
And now we have like a mission thing. Oh, here we go. Story selection. Story selection you can choose from various tales of Final Fantasy VII compilation. So, so you can download all the rest of it full download. This can like pretty much downloads the rest of the game itself. Um, but we'll probably call this first part here. Um, while this downloads, but we'll definitely check out some of the other stories. Uh, I don't know if they like increase the difficulty or how long the stories are, but there are three stories that what I could see. Um, there was the Final Fantasy VII story, which we just did the first introduction part. There was Crisis Core, and then there was like Sephiroth story, which we'll definitely take a look at that as well. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think if you are interested in like seeing maybe a potential full playthrough of this, or just um, maybe just certain scenes and bits from it. I, I don't know again about gotcha moments and things like that, but we'll take a look into that probably in the next video. Just kind of look and see how the gotcha system works. Um, how does the gill and crystal system and all that stuff works and overall general impressions of the game uh, after a certain point in time but thanks for watching make sure you subscribe and check out my live streams here on YouTube um, and all my other socials down below